That was a circle dance. Um, this is one of our oldest dances we have here in the valley. Um, these dances are, they say they were given to us by the creator we call uh, Enot, our father. Um, it's called our father's dance. This dance is uh, given to us back in a time when uh, Uvoko was having his dream um, about helping the people. And this was one of the dances that was given to uh, him by the Creator to help our people. And uh, we still use it today. Um, we use it to pray when we pray. <laughs>
a sacred place where people came to learn. It was more or less like a school, a place for teaching, and a place to ensure being connected to the earth and to everything that we hold sacred. Some people do just come here and put their names on there, stating, I've been here. And doing things like this is not ethical for a person who kind of understands what's going on here, what has been here, what's been performed here. But the power is still within that area. They cannot take that away. Look beyond the pictograph, and there is the honor or the spiritual essence of it. Grasp a little of that. Understand why they did this. Carry on down. Glory on down. All our grandfathers and our grandmothers, ladies and gentlemen, we have our band, grass dancers, band grass. All our band grass, ladies and gentlemen, we have our band traditional dancers. This particular regalia I made all myself. I made all of the beadwork, the moccasins with the leggings. And I made this, I actually was inspired uh, when I turned 40 years old that I wanted uh, a change, something to represent changing within the loom work, the beadwork that's here, you see the flower is in the middle, and then from there it has geometric designs, and that is a traditional Paiute design. And so with my other beadwork, I incorporated the other rose designs, such as uh, with my hair ties. And then also you'll see roses on my leggings. It, to me, represented uh, blooming or blossoming into um, full life. You'll see that there's uh, many designs incorporated. So I have like a sunburst design, uh, which also represents um, the coming of a new day. This purse was made to also represent my Indian name. And my Indian name is Many Relatives Woman. Those represent all of the relatives all around in the circle. In the center is the Stone Mother, who represents our creation and um, story going back to how we're supposed to treat our relatives and that we're not supposed to fight with one another, that we should be treating each other good and behaving. And then as the design comes further out from the circle, it comes back into the sunburst uh, design and then feathers all along the four corners there. And on my fan, it has the pyramid in the middle and then basically the same starburst design with feathers in the four corners. So abalone shells, are important. Uh, we used to trade for abalone a long time ago, and with the abalone, it, uh, they say it's like a mirror, like a reflection. So if there's anything uh, such as bad intentions or anything negative, then as a mirror, it bounces back to wherever the source came from. And my uh, great uncle, 
he taught me how to do these and how to, you know, make sure the beads laid flat because there's certain ways that you, you know, set the beads and then certain times when you add to it, it's an art that we need to keep alive. It's a constant prayer and thanksgiving and thinking about the people and whoever the people might be, whether it's our close relatives, whether it's people across the country, we all have hardship and we all need prayers and our earth needs prayers too. So um, that's what a lot of the designs here represent. My mother was from here, Pyramid Lake Paiute. My father was uh, from Shurs. So I'm a full-blooded Paiute Indian. And uh, I got into the dancing because my mother always danced. She was one of the original dancers from uh, here in Pyramid Lake. And in them days, they didn't have powwows. They had pageants, you know, and I would go to the pageants and watch them dance, all my elders, you know, and they never wore beads. Um, didn't carry feathers, you know, things like that. It was just plain because when these are dresses that the, the elders wore when they were working, cooking, um, you know, whatever they were doing. Um, this is the old style Paiute dress. It's made of cotton, floral print, um, the rick rick rack or ribbon they have. They used a lot. So what we do is we try to carry on and teach our young kids um, the art, the way the styles were. You know, you don't see too many of these dresses. Even in the powwow, you know, when you go powwow, you don't see too many of them, unless they have a, some kind of a special or, you know, something like that. Especially on hot days, we don't like to wear our buckskin. We gotta have the cool cotton dresses. I wear two feathers because I'm married. Um, usually those single women wear one feather. On my fan, I have a, a emblem of the American flag. That is because of my husband who is in the um, service and that I carry in honor of him. And when you go on the circuit, or what we say circuit, we go different powwows. Um, you can get out there on an inner tribal and you never see anything that are alike. They're always different color, different shapes, different, everything's different. No two things are alike in, in the circle. This dress and she has been uh, she left this went to the happy hunting grounds about 20 years ago so and this was made about maybe 15 20 years before that everything is hand beaded everything is hand sewn and the and the beadwork on the dress up here where the fringes are hanging um, that is our our family emblem that we have. This is smoked buckskin, that's why it's tan. But if it was just plain buckskin, it would be white. Most of the people up in the north, they have the white buckskin. And the fringes on these are short. 
you know, we, we wear our, our fringe short here in Pyramid Lake. You see up smoke box you can dress, they're usually Paiute or pyramid, mostly Pyramid Lake Paiute. The two feathers I have on top are representing, one goes to my family and one for the Creator. For when we, we pray, we pray for our family, we pray for our Creator. The hair piece on top is uh, porcupine hair, the roach. This is a roach, it's porcupine hair. Um, the flicker feathers I wear here, these are for the fire. That shows I've tended that sacred fire, ceremonial fire. Um, the fluff on this side, that represents the clouds. When we look up at the clouds, we see these, these fluffs. And a lot of times uh, we revere the eagle because the eagle is the one that flies the highest and he's the closest to the creator. So we revere the eagle and wear the eagle feathers. Um, gives us strength. We use it to keep time with the drum. And the deer is a very strong legged animal. It gives us strength in our legs. Also the angora that we have on the back. We also um, wear angora because the angora sheep is a very uh, strong legged animal also. So we, uh, we use that to keep strength in our legs. Um, my leggings, we use these winter time to keep our legs warm. Uh, they're made out of the deer hide. Um, same with the my front front breech. That's a deer hide. A long time ago, we used to use a um, a shiny rock. Um, they call tabishi, representing um, the reflection back that people have when they see you. Um, they reflect back that good feeling that they have when they watch you dance. Um, I carry a small medicine bag. This is a uh, carries my uh, medicine whatever that uh, I think I might be needing in a certain time, I'll have in here. And uh, the white medicine wheels represent the EB, and the red medicine wheel that I have on my sleeve here on, the, on this side, this represents the Pishepi, this is a red paint. The breastplate I wear has a basket design in the center here. Um, the basket design um, represents both sides of my family. Um, I have basket makers on both sides of my family. Um, I carry a eagle fan. This is um, like our shield. This is what um, shields us from uh, different things that might harm us. This is part of our, our shield. And the white horse hair that I have on here, this represents the uh, white horse that flew over the valley uh, during the ghost dance during the 1800s, late 1800s. And that represents that white horse. It was part of Ovoca's medicine, and the white rabbit fur, um, that represents the old style uh, dancers. They used to wear uh, rabbit skirts, white rabbit skirts. And then my staff is, is beaded with a, a basket design, and the white eagle feathers, or uh, bald eagle feathers, they too represent that white horse that flew over the valley. Um, these two feathers here, these were given to me by the man at did the coming out for me. He gave me these two feathers when he did my coming out at the Spirit of Evoca Days Pow Wow in 2009. So um, these were given to me by Mr. Sam Johnson. Uh, the staff is with me for for life. It's it's a partner in life. Braid our hair and wrap it. Um, this is a northern style uh, braid that, that we have in our, our hair. Now, a lot of these things are incorporated from the northern people. Lakota people, the Cheyenne people, Arapaho people, um, the northern tribes, like the Crooked Lance that's incorporated from the Lakota people. Um, a lot of times when we go to different uh, areas, we're given uh, certain rights to carry certain things for that tribe. And a lot of times when uh, we're given that, that right, we're to use it respectfully and we always ask permission you know, in order to carry things like this. Um, through our prayers, we say our prayers, they go through our feathers and they uh, go up to the Creator. That's how we uh, pray for our people.
there's numerous places where they cooked. If you choose to go to a site like this, be respectful of it. Be respectful of the area, the environment, and everything. Even the animals and the birds, they all play a part in this. It gives you a, a peaceful perspective that you came here and respected the place. Oh, oh, oh.